Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alec Reed. This is my channel Alec Reed and today we are doing Literally Accessible by underscore J-A-G underscore on Wattpad. Um, and today I do want to say that we are on part 16. Can you believe that? We're on part 16 already. We're, we're soaring through this. Um, there are a total of 19 chapters in total. So we have three more chapters. Three. That's, that's right, people. You heard me. Three. And then after that, I will be doing a completely new series with a completely new disability, um, whether it's being hearing impaired, whether it's um, limb loss, or whether it's being blind. Um, I have a million different ideas. Very exciting stuff. Um, so yeah, let's jump right into today's video. So let's get started. Part 16. The next few days were spent in the hospital. Normally, I would have been eager to get out of that place, but I found that the strong antiseptic smell was tolerable when I was with Shauna. Her parents and siblings would be there too, sometimes, and we'd play a board game as usual. Allison usually visited after school, bringing her flowers and cards signed from her classmates. It wasn't a surprise to me that so many people knew her. If there was anyone who could draw people in, like, months to a flame, it was Shauna. But the sheer amount of people that not only knew her, but cared so much about her, writing inside jokes in with their, well, wishes, sending her favorite snacks, and stopping by to see how she was doing. I was honestly a bit overwhelmed. As Shauna politely introduced all of her visitors to the random guy sitting in the corner of her room, and I wasn't even there all day. I didn't know how Shauna did it. How could one person be friends with so many people? But she was, and you could see how much she delighted every person that came to see her and how much they were delighted right back. When I asked her about it, Shauna simply shrugged and said, the best thing for you to share with the world is yourself. That's all I'm doing. She was really incredible and I obviously wasn't the only person that realized that. Finally, the doctor said she was ready to go home. Shauna's dad teased that they really just wanted to get rid of me, but either way, I was glad she, that she was going home. Another one, Shauna cheered, scratching her arm above her, stretching her arm above her head as the credits rolled after yet another Disney princess movie. She was sprawled out across the couch, her legs resting across my lap, as we had been for the last several hours. She was lucky I liked her so much. I drubbed my fingers against her leg. I gotta go. Her eyes swung over to me. What? Why? Football practice. She dropped her head back against the armrest and groaned. You'd really go rather go slap some dude's butts than watch a movie with me? Of course not, but I promised Coach that I'd play one more game before I was done. Only a few more days. Wait, what do you mean? Pausing, I realized that I hadn't actually told Shauna about everything that had happened the day of the accident. I had been a little preoccupied with the whole emergency, professing my love thing. Oh. I looked over, not quite meeting her eyes. I, uh, quit the team. She gasped, which was a little more dramatic than the situation entailed. You did? How'd everyone take it? I shrugged. Coach wanted me to stay. I said no, but he convinced me to play in this big game against their school rivalry team in a few days. She stretched out her hands towards me, and I took it, pulling her up so that she was sitting before I added. Will was pretty upset, actually. Why? She grumbled. Because he has to find someone else to take his rage out issues out on. I think he has college scouts coming to watch him. I don't know. It seemed really important to him. Hmm. She thought for a moment. Why'd you quit? Because of you? I figured since you're so demanding of my free time, I'd quit 
my extracurricular activities to find more time in the day. Her jaw dropped. Mark, why would you... You shouldn't have... I don't want to be the girl that's not what I wanted for... I cracked a smile, cutting off her rambling. I'm kidding. I quit because I wanted to. I didn't even like football that much anymore. Remember? This is me giving myself a chance to start over, just like you said. Oh, okay. She smiled softly. I'm just really happy for you then. Good. I carefully shifted her legs so that I could get out from underneath them. I've really got to go, though. I'll talk to you later. I stood up and grabbed my sweater from where it was draped over the arm of the couch, sliding it on. Do you want to come... Do you want back in your chair? No, I'm going to be a lump for a bit longer and watch more TV. You could come over for dinner after breakfast if you want. Rescue me from going full couch potato. I sighed playfully. I hate to refuse a damsel in distress, but I really should talk to my dad. I've been putting it off. She nodded in understanding. That's more important. Moving down, I put one hand on the couch next to her head. I leaned in towards her. You're important to me. I promise. She smiled. I know. Right back at you. I pressed a quick kiss to her lips. I love you. She lowered her gaze, face turning rosy. I love you. I painted another one across those blushing cheeks before leaving her to watch whatever guilty pleasure she planned on next. I said a quick goodbye to her parents and the kids before heading to practice, music playing loudly through my truck speakers. Things that haven't felt really good lately. I couldn't remember feeling this light for a long time. And I knew it was cheesy, but this feeling this way over a girl, but I couldn't help it. I loved her, and I did really enjoy kissing her. Man, why didn't I do that sooner? Even practice went well. Well, hardly even looked at me, let alone attempting anything that would mess me up. Maybe he would a change of heart. Or maybe he's nervous that I would change my mind about playing that big game. But who cares? Either way. Not me. I even got to shower in the locker room without a problem and didn't have to smell myself the whole drive home. If I was being completely honest with myself, which I was really trying to be lately, I was nervous about how the conversation with my dad was going to go. Things had been weird between us for a really long time, but the scare of the accident had reminded me that we didn't need to leave it that way. He was still my dad, and he still meant a lot to me. After dropping off my things in my room and saying a quick hello to Ryder, I found my dad in the kitchen, working on his laptop. Stalling, I grabbed myself a glass of water and mentally went over the words I had planned. You can do this. Make the choice to be better, Mark. Dad, I said, turning around. Are you busy? Yeah, he nodded gruffly, not looking up from his computer. I probably shouldn't have asked, I mumbled, sitting down in the chair across from him, twisting the glass between my hands. We need to talk. After a minute, he stopped typing and finally looked up at me, raising an eyebrow. About what? About this. I gestured awkwardly between us. He had to know what I meant. About us. For a moment, I wondered if he was going to go back to his computer and ignore the problem. But he slowly nodded and gave me his full attention, pushing his laptop aside. Is this about that girl? I felt my jaw clench, but at least we were getting straight to the point. Partly, yeah. Well, I don't really know what you want me to say. She's really important to me. When you're young, everything feels important. Everything feels like the most important thing at your age. There are a lot of things that I cared about when I was your age that I don't care about now. It's not until you get older that you realize you really 
care about what really matters, that she matters, I said flatly. I didn't like that he was talking about Shana like she was a fascination with cars, something to grow out of. Okay, he allowed. For now. But what I'm saying is that you can't expect a future with her. Completely taken aback, I blinked hard. What? Why not? Mark, she's crippled. You can't do the same things that people like you and I can do. You know she's not going to magically get better, right? She's going to be confined to that chair for the rest of her life. Forever. Do you expect to do things that you've always wanted to do with her? Be serious. Heat was coursing through my veins, throbbing at my temple, and I tried to hold back, but he was pushing me too far. What is your problem? How can you not see that her chair has absolutely nothing to do with who she is and why I care about her? She's the most amazing person I have ever met, and that's because of her character. Her disability is irrelevant. Then I paused, catching myself. Actually, no. Her disability is completely relevant because it is part of the reason I like her. Because she has dealt with more pain, more crap, than either you or I have ever had to. She still comes out as a better person. No competition. She is so kind, Dad. And funny and smart and good to every person she meets. If you actually cared enough to stop being so ignorant, you'd have seen it too. Mark. I shook my head with a soft, humorless laugh. <laughs> You're telling me to be serious. But this is the most serious I have ever been about anything. I love her, and I've already rearranged my future plans to fit her in them. She was either... He was either stunned into silence or had nothing to say. I wanted to think, fix things between us, I told him, swallowing hard, because I was really, really mad at you for a lot of things. Not just for the stuff with Shauna, but those things... Don't even matter to me anymore. I just... I wanted things to be okay. But if you're going to continue being like this, acting this way, thinking this way, then I'm sorry, but I can't have you in my life. I won't subject Shauna to your attitude. She doesn't deserve it. She's part of my life, and if you'd like to be, well, that's up to you now. Breathing hard, I push my chair back from the table. The legs of it screeching as it rubbed against the floor, piercing the silence. The air was too stiff. I needed to get out of there. I said my piece. I did what I could. I, Mark, wait, please. I knew it was my dad's voice, but it didn't sound like it usually did. It sounded smaller. Slowly, still on guard, I turned back to face him. He wasn't looking at me though his eyes fixed on the tabletop. I'm... sorry, he said slowly. Each word was painfully scratching its way out. I never... I didn't realize how important she was. Even if she was a stranger you met on the street, it wouldn't be okay, Dad. Right, of course not. That's not what I... I was wrong to say those things. Surprised, I nodded, waiting for the silence hung between us. My dad never admitted to being wrong, even if he made a bluntly obvious mistake. He usually edged around it, making up some excuse as to why it really hadn't been his fault in the first place. Eventually, he cleared his throat again. When your mother and I went to... I... We... My attitude isn't the best, okay? I know that. I promised I'd work on it. I did. I just... Wow. He was worse at expressing myself than I was. I was worried about you too, you know, he said, jumping tracks suddenly. For the last few months...
shut off from everything. You wouldn't talk to us. And we didn't know what was going on. It seemed like every day you were more sucked out of yourself. And you were getting worse. You were angry and fighting and hauled up in your room. Your mom was so upset and I was... I was angry at you for that. I shouldn't have been, but I was. Well, I was kind of going through something. I frowned. In what world did my depression warrant his anger? Everything you described. Yeah, that's what it felt like. But I'm doing better now. Like, a lot better. And a lot of that is thanks to Shauna. And the things she's been showing me. My dad was quiet. But then he looked up at me. I, I'm realizing that. And something told me he was. Something told me he was seeing me. Really seeing me for the first time in a long time. And it felt good. After things being so tense. After so much unspoken hurt. It felt so good to start airing it out. I want to work on things, he said seriously. I would like to uh, see Shauna again, too, if that's all right. I lifted my eyebrows in surprise. He finished quickly. To apologize. If she's, if she's important to you, I don't want her to feel like she's unwelcome here. I softened a little. Okay, I'll bring her around sometime. Okay, he nodded. But you gotta figure out the right language to use, I warned. You don't get to say cripple or people like her, okay? Figure it out. He nodded again, lowering his eyes again. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Dad. I stood to leave, feeling a little bit better. I knew things weren't totally fixed, but they were improving. And if my dad was serious about trying, then at least we were... <laughs> more time to build a relationship, to work on things. Oh. I paused in my doorway, looking back over my shoulder. I quit the team. My last game is on Friday. I hope you can come. I can come. My lips tilted into a small smile, and I nodded again. Cool. Cool. I climbed the steps to my room, feeling more drained with each one, dropping down onto my bed. I covered my face with my hands and blew out a huge breath. If emotions could run a marathon, mine had just done that. Feeling my phone buzz against my mattress, I reached over and turned on the screen, squinting against the light. Shauna. Yo, are you alive? Shauna. <laughs> JK, your dad isn't a murderer. Shauna. I'm watching cheesy chick flicks. Shauna. You're way cuter than this guy, though, and that's saying something, because it's Ryan Reynolds. Mark. I'm touched. Shauna. Yay, you're back! Shauna. You should be. He's a very attractive man. Mark. I don't really need to hear about your celebrity crush. Shauna. You jelly, because I'm attracted to his perfectly styled hair and perfectly arranged outfits. Shauna. Guys are ten times hotter when they have nice outfits. It's science. Mark. I have nice outfits. Shauna. <laughs> ah, you're cute. Mark. What? I do. Shauna. Good night, Marky boy. Mark. I have nice outfits. Shauna. I love you. Mark. Shauna. I have nice outfits and perfectly styled hair. Mark. Hello. Mark. Okay, fine. I'm cute. Mark. Did your phone break? Mark. Good night. I love you. Shauna. Winky face. Mark. You suck. All right. That is the end of today's episode. I really hope that you guys enjoyed. Um, I hope that you guys will come back for the next episode. Um, the next episode will be at chapter 17. Um, very exciting stuff, especially considering that there's only 19 um, 19 chapters, 
overall. Um, but anyway, like, subscribe, comment down below. Um, whether it's recommendations or whether it's leaving just a little hello, I respond to every one of them. Um, also, good morning, good afternoon, or good night. Goodbye, ladies, gentlemen, and everybody in between. And I'll see you in the next video. I love y'all. Stay safe. And um, bye, friends.